Hello everyone, welcome to Hot Shots TV. I'm your host Scott Briard and you're here for another episode of This Is Darts. And what an unbelievable week it is in the dart industry. Phil Taylor this past weekend hit two perfect games in one match. Unheard of. Never even thought of, I don't think. I mean, think back when John Lowe, Paul Lim hit the first nine dart games. We were amazed back then. But two in one match? Phenomenal. Even better than that is how humble Phil was after hitting it. He actually said, you know, it won't be long until somebody hits three or four in one match. And, well, it's pretty crazy he hit one. So I can't imagine three or four. Today on the show, we're going to talk about home dart setups. Because all of you at home hopefully have a board up on the wall or you're thinking about it. And while you're top players, you probably have one or two. If you're John Park, you might have three. Anyway, we're going to talk about putting dart boards up at home. Key, key things to putting it up. Beginners, and we're using this display here in Hot Shots because it's the most important thing I think that we've carried in the 10 years that we've been here, is having a chance to tell new players what they really need at home to protect their walls, protect the kids, and keep it really simple um, and really have something that's at the right height and, and proper and such when you get into league and tournament play. But what's nice about this, this one here in particular, it's made here in Ontario. It's great, not many things are made here anymore. Uh, the foam's even from Ontario, although I'm sure we're importing oil for it. But anyway, um, foam surround. They're about $110 when you get them in a pile of different stains. Uh, black, pecan, cherry, mahogany. Nice stuff to match your game room, your furniture currently in your home. What's most important is it is 30 inches by 30 inches of foam, and that's key, um, especially when you're for, begin for beginners. Cabinets are small, usually 22 by 22, 24 by 24. And what happens is people usually miss, hit the chalkboard, hit the wood surround around it, ends up looking nicked and dinged right away. Everybody has a cousin, aunt, uncle, you've been to their house and the dartboard looks like crap. That's why. They're beginners and they're damaging everything. That or they're letting grandma play. But anyway, this here, 30 inches by 30 inches of foam. The whole cabinet's actually 32 by 32 and it's inexpensive. If you think about the fact that it's nice stain, it's going to match your decor. Um, and what's great is that it holds any professional dartboard. So all dartboards being 18 inches across, I don't care if it's Unicorn, Windmill, Nodor, wherever you find, wherever you shop, it will fit to the center. But keys to putting it up, no matter what cabinet or what setup you're using, bullseye's got to be at 5 feet 8 inches. And don't go on lowering it for the kids because it's not going to make them great players when they get older. Always keep this up so that the bullseye's at 5 feet 8 inches. When you go with the league play, tournament play, hopefully they know what they're doing and it's at the same height. Now, what's really nice about this one is it goes through really easily um, through a screw. We've gone into drywall. This one's been here seven years. Um, I think my dad and I put it up and it actually hasn't budged in seven years, which considering dad and I put it up, it's kind of amazing. We usually put things up that fell down. But anyway, a couple of drywall plugs, one in each corner and two behind the bracket itself that holds the dartboard. And again, as everybody knows, screw goes in the back of the dartboard, sits itself in the keyhole bracket, and everything's up and ready to go easily. So. Dartboard uh, surrounds, I think we call them, $110. Dartboards, as you know, $60 and up for good quality. And then keys also for home use. What's a great idea, if you don't want the kids getting chalk all over their hands, chalk all over the furniture, all over the cat, whatever it is, there's actually electronic scoreboards. Now, it does nothing for your counting ability. And one of the great reasons dart players always did great at math is because they're constantly calculating quickly in their head, subtracting, multiplying, and such. It's great for me as a kid, and a lot of you can probably relate to this when you were back in school. I don't care, it's college and university. If you played a lot of darts, been great at math, it probably showed up on your report card, hopefully. So electronic scoreboards, as nice as they are and as clean as they are, they won't make you a great counter. Now, I'm a big fan of actually chalkboards itself. This one's unbelievably dirty, um, but when they're nice and clean, they're a great idea because chalk never runs out. If you've ever owned a dry erase board, a dry erase marker, this thing dry up way too, too quickly. Somebody leaves the cap off, as always, usually me it was anyway. So chalk makes sense, easy to calculate. Make sure they're large. There are a lot of small chalkboards out there. Families buy them because, well, it's small, it'll fit beside the dartboard and everything. You need to write quite largely in order to see the scores from seven foot nine and a quarter away. And if you've got bad eyes like I do, you want big writing to be able to see what's going on. This is extremely important for bar use as well because if you're in leagues, you're going to want to have the right setup for the players that come in and drink beer and eat food every week. You're going to want them to have a setup that'll be the same thing as when they go off to the Provincials National Championships. Large chalkboards, great large surrounds, makes the game a lot easier. Exactly for the home use, it actually looks kind of nice. Electronic scoreboards, this is the smallest one of all. It's the most uh, inexpensive, I guess, as well. It's about $80. It's great because you just select where in the board you've hit and it will calculate itself. We've done shows on the Dart Master. I know we're actually going to sit down with the inventor of the Dart Master, Ian Hutchinson from, uh, from Burlington, Ontario, will come in one day. 
We're going to talk about the large dart master, why it's been the greatest, greatest scoring mechanism, I guess, ever created for darts because it allows you to play against a computer. With that said, with the iPad out, someone will create an app. Believe me, if it's not me, it's going to be somebody. But anyway, the electronic scoreboards, this one's at 80. We have another great one. I think it's around $160. It's larger, and again, the lettering on it's a lot larger. The number's showing, so you can see from seven foot nine and a quarter what the heck you have left. So, great setup. Make sure you have a good surround, great scoring system, and give yourself lots of space here. A lot of people, especially when in the bars, everything's really jammed in. It's not great. If somebody's standing scoring and you get another board too close, someone's going to get hit and have been hit with a dart. You don't want to do that. So make sure everything's well spaced, especially at home if you're putting up more than one board. Give everything lots of space so everybody has a great chance to have some distance and exactly a chance to get the chalker in there so he doesn't get hit. So great idea, especially for home use, have the scoring and have the surround, which will give you a chance to not ding up the walls. Although as you can see here, I don't know if you can see any of the holes, it happens, but give yourselves a nice large surround and have a chance to enjoy the game at home, make it simple and easy for everybody. And for those that are really, really serious about darts, we pretty much keep up on top of everything, but something slipped through the cracks on me, and I can't believe this. We had these brought in from England this past week. WeLoveDarts.com. Um, probably the greatest thing to dart since Phil Taylor, I think, anyway. Um, magazine out of the UK. Darts World's always been around, but it's never really evolved. It's never been a nice, glossy, papered magazine. Um, all the key information's in there. And again, Bullseye News, great magazine out of the U.S., covers everything that's going on in the U.S. and Canada, updates on what's happening in the U.K., but these are actual interviews with U.K. players behind the scenes of the U.K. events. Um, unbelievable gra graphics in here anyway, print, visuals. Um, and you got to love the Brits. Um, just like the U.K. newspapers, you've got the U.K. darts magazine. So lots of fun to read anyway, lots of great pictures if you don't like reading. Um, but anyway, nice glossy magazines, we love darts.com. Hit the website, lots of information. Um, I'm really impressed with this. Um, can't believe it slipped itself by me for about a year. But anyway, we got them. Uh, if you're in Hot Shots, uh, ask us about them. We'll bring them on the counter and show them to you. Um, but I'm sure you can grab a subscription off we love darts.com. And as we do, we love darts, um, but hit we love darts.com. Well, that's about it for this week. Phil Taylor, two perfect games in one match. Unbelievable. Can't wait to see three or four, but I've got a, got a feeling it'll be by Phil, um, not happening by anybody else. Anyway, surrounds. Get them for your home. Small cabinets, they're nice. They look great. They have doors that you know cover the dartboard when you're not playing, but if you've got beginners at home, this is the way to go. Everybody, as always, thanks for watching. Have a great week.